talk about that at the end. Hey folks, happy new year. Thanks for coming by. Uh, I've got a video here about st stuff that I've done for the last two weeks. Let's take a look at that and then we'll talk about where we are and where I think we're going. All right. <clears throat> I don't know if, uh, it's been a while, isn't it? The back plate goes on this way. The first VCR is long green. Little uh, micro B. Sucker. Slot. So, Alright, so now I'm going to back out of this. The quality immediately ship. Quite similar. What? Well, this is a drag. It seems to be the Beagle Bone Green seems to be insisting on booting from the internal drive. What override button once upon a time we were supposed to have to push to get that to change. Oy.
<laughs> I, get, I get a little hypnotized watching that. So, uh, all right. Um, we, the long and short of it is I made 60 more tiles, uh, two boxes of 30. I was going to heft them up here, but I'm still having terrible problems with uh, this whole video setup. So everything's fragile. I hate it. Uh, but uh, the long and short of it is, is we are now close to 100 tiles with the 60 I just made, plus the 20 something that I've been using that have been in the existing T2 demos and so forth. Uh, during the process, I didn't uh, focus on it in the video, but there was one uh, apparent board failure that I tried a couple of different beagle bones with it and I couldn't get the thing to boot. Uh, uh, yeah, I didn't actually diagnose this. You know, this is part of my arc going from electronics consumer to electronics maker. You know, that, you know once there's actually sort of a pipeline, a process, you know, uh, some things aren't going to work. And, you know, maybe you fix them and maybe you just sort of put it aside and up your selling price enough to compensate for it. So, you know, we'll see whether I go back and figure out what was wrong with that board or not. Uh, I haven't yet. Going forward in the hardware front, my goal is to try to power out another 30 tiles. If we have, if I don't run out of anything, I'm actually worried about running out of the little Phillips head uh, uh, screwdrivers that screw the beagle bone down onto the board. Although, you know, there's really no reason why I have to use four screws and so forth. Uh, um, but we'll see. And then go ahead and start building the power zones, which I'll talk about in a second. And then facing the software demons, which I'll also talk about in a second. All right. So... This is a figure from 2018 that is actually still largely correct, uh, uh, except now I don't uh, hyphenate uh, intertile uh, connector anymore. You know, that's the way it is. You know, words start out separately, then they hook up, and then after a while they become a whole one single word together. The idea is, is that one of these, uh, these tiles, and I've talked about this, but I haven't talked about it that much lately. Uh, um, the, the connectors that go in between them, the, the, there's three different kinds of connectors. And so th this is the one that we've seen the most. Uh, if you look at it, I guess we can probably see it. There's two little sockets there. Each of these goes into a separate adjacent T2 tile. This one, and then there's a little circuit board that holds them together, and then a little 3D printed handle. This one has got sort of a lozenge pill shape. This is a DP. That means it connects data lines and power lines. So if there's power going into one of these tiles and there's a DP connector, the power flows into the other one. Uh, um, and that's by design. And the, the point of it is, is that all of this stuff, the wiring and the circuitry and all of this, is all sized to carry a certain amount of current and not more. And so the way it was designed, the way I designed it, uh, um, was that something on the order of 20 tiles should be able to have the amount of handle the amount of current going through these connectors and so forth. So uh, this is uh, the original design for a power zone. It's 19 tiles, one tile surrounded by six, surrounded by 12 uh, uh, for a total of 19. And, you know, I shift to a more rectangular shape, a five by four shape, but I'm tempted to actually go back to this because it's, I just like it better. It seems more organic to me. Uh, um, but the important point of it is, is that that is all uh, there in the middle there. Where is it? Can we see it? Right, uh, right there uh, uh, is once the third, t well, there's, there's three types. So we saw the data and power one. Uh, this is the data only. It's got, you see the same thing. It's got the two connectors, the circuit board, but the circuit board's a different circuit board and it has this different sort of flared uh, uh, handle to distinguish it from the DPs. And those are data only connectors that go all around the uh, end of a power zone. So the idea is you uh, take a power injector, the rarest kind of ITC connector, uh, uh, that's effectively a DP, data and power, but it also has this pigtail that you can plug into a wall ward. And the way the whole thing is designed, it uses 12 volt uh, wall ward power supplies uh, with a connector that matches the one that's used for a lot of LED strip lighting. So it's, it's, it's very cheap and they're all over the place. So the idea is you take a, a 19 tiles, you connect them together by data and power connectors, you surround them with data only connectors, and you plug in a single power injector, and that's a power zone. Now, actually, with more experience, I would actually rather have two power injectors per power zone so that if you need to remove a tile that happens to be connected to a power injector, you could 
remove one power injector and still have redundant power going in somewhere else. I don't think I have enough uh, circuit boards and, and headers and so forth manufactured to actually do two power injectors per power zone, but you know, we'll see how it goes. The point is, is that uh, the original size of the build, the plan build, there it is down there, 133 tiles, that's 19 tiles times seven arranged in this kind of flower. And, and this is what I, I would like to shoot for. Uh, can we get to 133 trials, trials before running out of something? I'm not sure, uh, uh, but we'll find out. But if we can manage to make seven power zones and arrange them as one power zone with six power zones surrounding it, I'm calling that success on the hardware front. We'll see. I don't know. Uh, okay, but that's the plan uh, going forward uh, on software. In some sense, the story of last year uh, uh, was me trying to figure out how to make the engine processing, the event processing on the T2 tiles more robust and failing and failing and failing. Uh, um, and I thought about it quite a bit over the, you know, while I was making tiles. And my feeling is, you know, and this is not a new thought, but it just really came home solid, was that, uh, um, you know, the simulator, MFMS, the Movable Feast Machine Simulator, uh, has been absolutely wonderful and critical to the development of the whole project, but it has some design limitations in it that you know we sort of knew about, but we, we lived with. And in particular, the MFMS design does not actually do much work as far as handling tiles going away and coming back. In the simulator, there is an, an, uh, an option to pick a tile and disable or re-enable it. It, but in fact, even when it's disabled, it's actually still processing packets from the neighbor. It's just not originating any events of its own. So that's a certain kind of, uh, you know, something that the software might need to deal with, but it's not the same as the neighboring power simply powering down, neighboring tile powering down or rebooting. And so MFMS, which informed the design of MFMT2, the engine that runs on the tiles uh, uh, really has nothing much to say about how to deal with much more radical things like the neighbors rebooting or powering off. And my feeling now is that, you know, I got a little bit, you know, it's so easy to get hooked on determinism, you know, the first hit's free. Uh, um, and even with the uh, asynchronous behavior of the MFMS simulator, uh, uh, the fact that tiles essentially were set up when you power up the simulator, when you run the program and you can disable enable but they're always there that creates a possibility that once a, a, a tile has managed to get a lock it's pretty sure that that's going to succeed and its events going to succeed and its neighbors are going to reply and that's what we have to do without so my plan is to start from a clean screen uh start a new branch uh for the thing and redesign start over. Uh, eventually, sure, I'll be able to pull in little low-level bits of code from the existing branch, but I want to do that really gingerly to avoid sort of the slippery slope back to where we were. In particular, I want to focus on, you know, each tile is going to say, well, hey, you know, I'm going to try to coordinate with the neighbors, but I don't need the neighbors. The neighbors can go at any time, and I will have a clearly designed uh, d definition of what to do. I will finish any events that I am in charge of. I will go ahead and commit them. I will mark the neighbors as being uh, th that space as being non-existent, which is now will now be visible to the upper level ULAM and SPLAT programmers, uh, um, and just take it all from the sort of tile centric uh, no matter what happens the tiles toes are still tapping in this self stabilization style and i'm even thinking this might not work out but i'm even thinking there's a possibility to use the whole generalized distributed ring oscillator stuff that was embodied by the ringo.ulam code uh, 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 last time a couple times ago there might be a way to do an analogous bit of that at the intertile level as far as coordinating events. I don't know about that. We'll see. But that's the plan. Uh, I am had it with trying to force myself to do little patches here, little patches there, and to pretend that that's going to lead to anything that's going to be at all, rust, ro at all robust. I, don't, I no longer believe that. This is the plan. We'll see how it goes. 
All right. Uh, so that's the main thing. Oh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> the, the little logo at the beginning. I thought it would be, uh, you know, worthwhile to try to come up with a new little tighter uh, uh, bumper intro logo to put at the front of these T Tuesday updates. And I thought, hey, hey let, why not do the the computing team creed? You know, it, it appears we can't really see it because it's covered with the back plate, but it appears on each on the back of each T2 tile, first be robust, then as correct as possible, and as efficient as necessary, the T2 tile project like that. So I made up a completely, a completely terrible one about two hours ago uh, uh, as a placeholder. Uh, uh, and I wonder, you know, if, if there's any folks out there that have, you know, graphics or, or video or any of this kind of thing that, that might want to take a crack at making a better uh, little intro bumper for the T2 tile project using the uh, the computing team creed uh, and and anything. I mean, I don't, you know, just as long as it's, you know, less than six or seven or eight seconds tops uh, and doesn't use any copyright stuff so we can just go ahead and use it. Uh, I would love to feature <laughs> uh, stuff if anybody actually wants to take a crack at that. For my own goals, uh, um, the short science fiction short story, Search Quiet Wake, I uh, uh, had a couple of readers now, a couple of select folks <laughs> have read it, and I've gotten some select feedback from them. Uh, uh, and in fact, I did uh, another pass over it and, and changed it a fair bit. Uh, uh, my goal for the next two weeks is to send the story off to Asimov Science Fiction Magazine or, or possibly someplace else. But, you know, send it out, get the clock running, let them reject it. Uh, you know, if they reject it, then well, that'll be part part of the story. If they accept it, that'll be uh, a new piece of the adventure. Uh, um, we'll find out. <sighs> Have some fun. I need to keep reminding myself of that. You know, like when I was building the tiles, I, I discovered, I mean, they took me about like 12 to 15 minutes a pop to actually do all the assembly part, uh, you know, after the flashing was done. Uh, um, and I could do about six of them before my brain would start to start, start to fry and I would make mistakes and say, you know, have I you know, put all the pieces in and so forth. And so it was like, OK, so so do six and then go do something else and then come back and do another six. Have some fun. It's working out OK. Uh, uh, and then finally, uh, you know, build some more grid. Let's get uh, 120, hopefully. Uh, or more uh, tiles put together and start doing the the structural work to, to put together the power zones and we'll see how it goes. That's the plan. Uh, uh, and, you know, for all of us, uh, let's try to have a robust 2022. Thanks for stopping by.